like to introduce Mr. Nick Griffin, MEP. Thank you very much. Alan Walk. Um, so, what I'm going to introduce, I'm going to introduce the first candidate, which is um, going to be Peter Foreman. What we're going to do after that was going to, on the um, agenda, forget everything that's on it. <laughs> and I'll just work through it. First of all, I'm going to introduce Peter Foreman. Um, Peter's stood in the uh, parliamentaries in Middlesbrough. Uh, for us before as a candidate, um, and I think you'll make a good candidate for us in the North East. So, first of all, Peter Foreman. Thanks very much, Chris. Now, um, I've been asked to do this job, and I'm pleased to do it, because, as you all know, we're in, we're in dire straits, and if we can get more MEPs into Europe, then we can watch what's going on and hopefully assist in its destruction. Because it's damn well assisting our destruction. So, you know, like for like. So Nick's done his best and still doing his best. And I'm sure we're all very proud of him, as I hope you are. Yes. <laughs> now, you give me 10 minutes on the agenda. <laughs> so anyway, um, yes. So, uh, as I say, I'm very proud to uh, be standing and basically what I'll be doing is a vote gatherer. Now, the more votes, the better. So, we've got to get out there, we've got to get people to understand what Europe is doing to them and we've got to get the votes in. I will not be standing as MEP, it's just not going to happen. The way it works is that we get the votes in and the one that um, is, vote, is understood to be number one will end up as MEP, we hope. Okay? Now, I think we've got a very, very good chance. We've got three good people. I'm one of them. <laughs> we've got Lady Dorothy and we've got Martin. Now, we're, we're passionate nationalists like everybody in this room. And I really do believe that if we get out there and do our job, get out there and start getting the votes in, then the figures say we can do it. Okay? So please have faith in us. We've got faith in this area, the northeast of England, to say yes, we want an MEP from the British National Party. Okay? So I'll do my best for you. I hope to make you proud. And basically, that's all I've got to say. I'm not going to bore you anymore. And I would now like to hand you over to Uncle Chris. Thank you very much, Peter. I think you'll do brilliant. You can tell by his gift of his gab. He normally chairs our meetings in South Tarnside. Um, and he doesn't have any problems with the cameras. Um, he's a very articulate type of chap. And, There's uh, a camera? Yes, we've got a camera. <laughs> 
Um, obviously, you can see by our attire, it's uh, St Andrew's Day. So, as we had such a fantastic uh, St George's Day recently, um, and we had a St George's party, and all our Scottish members uh, joined in fully with that, including Lady Dorothy Brooke. Um, we've got. Um, I'd like to thank all our Scottish members for coming down uh, to support us today, all the way from uh, um, various parts of Scotland. Uh, uh, brought down with uh, Kenny and Tom, um, so I'd like to thank those uh, for, for their support. We've also got sorry, we've also got people from all parts of the country. You know, we've got people from uh, Burnley over there, Carlisle. I can see. Um, Angus, I think you're from the uh, northwest somewhere as well, aren't you? Um, yeah. So, you know, we've got people from all over the place come, you know, come to support us today. And that's what it's all about, because we, we are all in it together. Um, we have got a good chance, you know, what Peter said. We've got a very good chance. Um, I don't want to spoil Martin's funder, because I think he's got some figures uh, worked out uh, as to regards uh, what swing we had to get on it. But um, we had um, Donna Watson, uh, who was in the uh, audience tonight. Um, Donna did absolutely fantastic in the uh, parliamentaries uh, for, South, for South Shields. And it's not that much more than what Donna got for us to actually get an MP MEP in. So, you know, if we want to change these laws, we want to come out of Europe, but we, we really need to get MEPs. We're not gonna get, get, come out of Europe overnight we're not going to get off, offered a referendum, that's not going to really happen. Um, but if we had MEPs in, and we could, we could um, attack these policies at source, like our chairman's been doing for the past four years. So that's a way forward to get people elected. And, uh, that, and the MEPs are a much better chance of getting us elected than we have in, in, the, um, in, in our normal parliamentaries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand you over to Lady Dorothy Brooke, um, Lady Dorothy Brook is our Deputy Regional Organiser and Regional Secretary. So, ladies and gents, put your hands together for Lady Dorothy Brook. Good evening, everybody. My name is Lady Dorothy Brook. Before I start this, I'd just like to say, I want you to think about the tragedy that happened in Glasgow yesterday. And I want to send my condolences to all the people who were injured to all the family and friends out there, to all the people who helped all these services, the fire services, the ambulance service, etc. and everything, who did a marvellous job. And it's a horrific thing to happen at this time of the year at any time. So let's not forget about them. Mm. Now we know today this is St Andrew's Day, and of course in Scotland they've decided not to hold it, right? Purposely, because of this tragedy. Um, right, I've been a member of this party for about four and a half years. I'm delighted to be standing here as a candidate. It is a privilege. It's a privilege to be in the BNP. Um, for many years, I didn't know where a party was, and I always voted BNP, although I never knew anybody in it. I love the policies. I love all the things about the BNP. They're a truthful party, an honest party, and a party that we should be proud of. We shouldn't be hid away. We should be out there in the very front telling people exactly what our policies are. Now, many things have happened in my life and which led me to come into the BNP. I hate this horrible government, what it's doing to the vulnerable people. I hate ATOS, what they're doing to our servicemen. Of course, I have a special thing for servicemen. Um, my motion was passed, um, Gulf War Syndrome, these men are suffering. And I do hope to follow that up and do something about it for these men. I've met many men um, who have been in the army and who have done horrendous things afterwards. And it's only because they were full of to toxins. Um, our health service is in decline. We've had many nurses and many patients die because of the service that we're getting in there. And to die of dehydration is a horrible thing when it can be prevented. Our police force no longer tell the truth. They're against everything that we stand for. Sharia law, I'm against that for the simple reason we have our own law courts. We have judicial here and we've had it for more than 400 years. We don't need another service. The one we have is quite adequate. And many other reasons why I'm in the BNP. So all I can say is to Nick, 
thank you. I look at you as someone special because you have done a lot for this party and you're our hero. I know this is St. This is, I was going to say St. George's Day, this is St. Andrew's Day, right? In Scotland, we had William Wallace, who was a freedom fighter. But tonight, we have Nick Griffin, who is our freedom fighter. Thank you. So thank you, everybody. And I would like to wish every candidate who is standing in the election from all over different venues, I wish them luck. And I hope this party goes from strength to strength. Thank you. As always, Lady Dorothy Brooke, she, um, she pulls at the ice cream sometimes and uh, everything she does say is true, you know, that's why we are all here. Uh, we're not a bunch of racists or fascists or whatever the left-wing media try to portray us as. We're just working class people who are sick and tired of seeing our country fall by the wayside and no one doing anything about it. So we have brave people like these freestanding and of course our chairman who's gone through the mill several times. And of course, looking around the air and looking at your faces, I can see many more that are as well. That's why you're here tonight, and that's why you're that's why you're here on different meetings. That's why you're here, you know, at the um, in London for Lee Rigby or for other activists throughout the country, you know, activities throughout the country. So you all need a pat on the back, and you all need a clap. Um, I know I'm going to sort of spoil the floor a little bit, but the the, the the thing is, we need to raise in the North East five thousand pounds. For that five thousand pounds, we've got enough. Uh, money for literature to go out to every single home in the North East. Every single home in the North East will get a, a leaflet, a PNP leaflet, from um, delivered by the Royal Mail. Now, I know as an activist, I know as a one-legged activist, how hard it is delivering uh, just one ward alone. But you imagine we can get those, we can get every single uh, household delivered by the Royal Mail, that's if it happens, of course, because we've had that kind of trouble with those before. Um, but that, that is a massive, a massive plus if we could raise that money, and I don't, I don't see any reason why we can. Now, not only that, with the three candidates, every single person in the North East then can vote for the British National Party. It's like having a candidate on every single board, which is going to be fantastic. It's going to give us an eye, it's going to give us a high profile. If, if nothing else, people are going to realise that we're still around, which we are. Um, we, obviously, we're not in the papers. Media blackout and um, the, the fact that journalists cannot report favourably you know, you know, about the British National Party. But we will be still around. Every single household will get a BNP leaflet. And what we put on that leaflet will tell them the truth. And, and it's not going to be their lies, what the, what, the, um, what the media put. Now, like I say, we have to raise that money. We have to, if you look at the back end, I mean, we're not alcoholics, by the way, because you see a bottle of Smirnoff on the camera. Um, That's fine. We've got some absolutely <laughs> fantastic prizes, and we've been drawing raffles all night. And if you look on that back wall, it's, you know, people, you've, you've, all, you've all actually brought some brilliant prizes. And we've got some fantastic auctions later on in the evening. Um, Maybe we should just leave them in until we have an area meeting. Until we've had a few beers. Right. Oh yes, <laughs> we, maybe we can get some of it to bottle them later on. So there you are, that's the draw. Now, back to the business at hand and back to Chris. I do apologise, I spent quite a bit of money on that raffle and uh, it's not very good at drawing numbers. Them socks would have done me twofold because I would have been able to wear them twice. <laughs> <laughs> Two days. I had my eyes on them. <laughs> I'm uh, going to pass it over to Martin. Now, Martin Vaughan um, is our number one candidate. Um, with Martin, Martin was one of the uh, founder members back to the uh, South Townside branch. The South Townside branch was like the biggest, you know, one of the biggest branches in the North East. And um, this is where we are this evening in South Townside. So it's pretty local for Martin. So I'm going to pass, well, it's local for the three candidates as it goes. But they all go to South Town side branch. But I'm going to pass you over to Martin, um, and uh, we'll hear from Martin. Thank you very much. Hi there, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming in this evening. I'm going to start off on a little bit of a solemn note. Um, 
by um, honouring a request from the Chairman, Mr. Nick Griffin. Um, I'd like to start um, with a moment's silence in respect of those who died in Scotland this morning in Glasgow. So can we just have a moment's silence, please? Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, straight on to the business scene. Um, you know, let's all spare a thought for those families in Scotland this morning. It's obviously been a very uh, tragic night and a day for them, and um, we we have to move on. Life moves on, you know, this is what happens. And um, basically, I'd like to start by saying um, we do not want to lose Scotland from the, the Union, obviously. Um, I don't, personally, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think there's probably a Scot in a room that actually wants independence and um, and I don't believe it'll happen. I really don't. So anyway, back to what I do best. Um, campaigning for the election. Okay. What we're gonna do is um starting the first Saturday in the new year, we're gonna start hitting every town in the northeast of England with our uh, stall on the campaign trail. During this time we'll be collecting Thousands of postal votes. Um, we'll be we'll be starting off in Berwick. The actually the northeast region actually spans from Berwick, including Berwick in the north, right down to as far as North Yorkshire. Uh, Richmond, I think, would probably be the closest town, which isn't included, but right down we'll carry out all there, north and south Durham. And um, basically, we've got our work cut out. We've got a hell of a lot of work to do. We need to hit two, so three towns every Saturday starting the first Saturday in the new year. Come rain or shine, the British National Party will be there. Um, we will be able to have an impact on the crowd. The, the figures what we're actually looking for to win this seat aren't that grand. Um, I was talking to Clyde Jefferson um, just earlier on this week, and the actual figures, the last time we actually stood these European elections, the British National Party took just under 10% of the vote. Now, to get our deposit back, we actually only need 2.5% of the vote. So what Clyde went on to say was, even if we take a 66% drop in the vote, we would still retain our deposit. But to win the vote, we need approximately 17%. That means we only have to gain another 7%. So I believe that's doable. Um, I think if we work hard and we get out there, come rain or shine every Saturday, and let the whole of the northeast know uh, that we're there, that we're busy, and uh, we have to upstage all the um, top and safety parties that's following us, trying to wear our shoes, so to speak. Um, but we will do that, no doubt, because the BNP have been there the longest, we've been there the hardest, and we'll be there forever, whether the press like it or not. And like Chris said, we do need. £5,000 to do this and I'm pretty sure because you see it's, it's like this basically the North West has had an MEP here in Nick Griffin for the last four years the North East needs an MEP because without an MEP in the North East we're just going to get all this crap from the local authorities like what's coming in from South Tyneside North Tyneside and you know, all of these local authorities, even Berkshire Council, you've got all these left-wing parties running these councils, and there's literally nothing there, nothing there for the nationalists who live in the Northeast. So if we can get a member elected into the European Parliament, at least that way, we would be able to do something. We would have representation for the Northeast. You know, Nick Griffin's doing a fantastic job in the Northwest, but obviously in his capacity, he can't represent the Northeast. You know, he obviously represents the whole country being the party chairman, but in his capacity as an MEP, he can only represent the North West. So, am I right in saying that? Yeah. So, what we need is um, as much as we can possibly get. Like I say, it's not what's in your pockets tonight, it's what you can actually pledge 
you've got until the end of March to pay it. And you know, would appreciate any amount of cash. And if anybody who just wants to donate a penny, or a hundred quid, or a thousand quid, please come and see me or Chris, and we'll take it from there. And that's my job done as a fund holder for the Northeast region, and hopefully as a future MEP for the region. Thank you very much for your time.